Hey y'all, so here goes nothing. This is Vlogtober episode one and today is a very different special day. I am speaking at my first college graduation and I'm the, obviously I'm the guest speaker. So I'm at the gym right now because I've been literally nervous out of my mind all week and it's not that I don't think I can do it. I'm just nervous and I think I'm nervous before any kind of big event or whatever but i'm at the gym and i'm talking to one of the people that work at the gym and he's a jamaican guy and i'm like you know i'm nervous he was like what you nervous for show up and show him that you that girl on the floor whatever he said y'all i really don't everything he was saying but i i had to you know figure it out i had to read it between the lines but i was like you know what you are right i am her like I said and you will be the first person I show my speech like stop playing with me and I can't wait to show y'all my speech for real I like I'm amped I'm pressed I'm geeked I'm excited I'm nervous but at this point I'm just like who's I'm about to go eat at Arundel Mills with my dad and he is going to the speech with me my dad be pulling up for me my dad is my ride or die he be pulling up to all the events for me so I can't wait to show y'all so see ya Eric Soto Chutan. Here tonight is going to be a chef, Alexis Hicks. Alexis Hicks is a native of Prince Georgie who graduated from one of the most prestigious culinary institutions in the world, Le Cordon Bleu. She graduated at the top of her class, summa cum laude. Alexis worked with top chefs in Las Vegas, Atlanta, and Orlando, and has been a sous chef for multiple well-versed chefs in the industry. Alexa is a veteran culinary comp competitor, featured in competitions on the Food Network, the Travel Channel, and she has placed top 10 in the world food championships yearly, taking home the title of first individual winner. She also has advanced year after year in another competition with the World Food Championship. Chef Hicks currently owns a traveling catering service called Zero Manipulation, which has celebrated five years in business in 2000. 21. The company honors Alexa's most significant vision to exposing her community to different flavors, samplings from around the world. Zero Manipulation hosts safety parties, private dining experiences at home and on location, nutritional meal prep, catering, and virtual baking classes for children. Chef Alexis is also a social media pioneer and socialite. She is a full-time content creator for TikTok and YouTube, posting instructional videos on creating some of her most popular dishes. Please help me welcome Chef Alexis Hicks. So, post-event, that was the most nerve-wracking thing I ever did in my life. Um, I was nervous. I was nervous as f like it's not even funny. Made it through, but I did a good job. <laughs> that was one of the most challenging things I ever did. I'm not even gonna hold you. I have a fear of public speaking, but I have been challenging myself to do it regardless. So the fact that I showed up and did it anyway, I'm so proud of myself. Good night, I'm about to finish the last episode of Sell at Sunset, eat my food, drink my water, wipe this makeup off, the shower and i have a 8 a.m catering like it has to be delivered at 8 a.m so i have to get up at like five so bye y'all and maybe 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 i'm scared i don't i don't think i want to show y'all i think i want to show y'all i might show y'all part of it don't know yet but bye if you haven't already make sure you go check out what's up kitchen in northeast i ate there before i went to my salsa and bachata class I went to salsa with Sylvia, and let me tell y'all, I had a really good time. You literally have to intimately dance with a random stranger, and you know what? For me, I like breaking out of my shell, so I definitely had an amazing time, and I will be back.
I've been contemplating joining a salsa series, so that just solidified it for me. And Saturday morning, I took my butt to Pilates to get the day started. And then, baby, it's party time with the girls. Girls night is always a good time, but now y'all to the speech. And I faced a lot of trials and tribulations in college. And a lot of it was, to me, in my opinion, a lot of racial overtones. And I was depressed. I even contemplated quitting college. Thank God I didn't, y'all. Thank God I didn't. It just stopped seeming worth it to me for a while. And one day I walked into my school's library and it was a flyer about this culinary competition called the World Food Championships. And I competed in a small competition. You know, I don't know if your college does it, but they do scholarship money. So you compete for $500 to $1,000 for different scholarships around the school. But this competition in particular was for $100,000. And I was like, okay, I have to go against my school's heaviest hitters. And if you are in the culinary program, you know the chef's favorite, the one they glorify. And I won. So I paired up with a partner and we had like four days to get ready for this competition. And mind you, I'm a fresh 18 years old. I don't have enough seasoning yet. I don't have the skill to me just yet. Could I beat people 20 to 30 years my senior? But your girl got up there and I won. <laughs> Oh my gosh, one of the culinary school students has made it to the top 10. And when they scream my name, my dad is up there screaming with the camcorder in his hand. I'm screaming on my friends and I just couldn't believe it. But now I hit my next obstacle. I was working at a security company on the side and I was given the ultimatum. Should I quit my job so I can continue in this competition? or just quit all together. I told my boss, I quit. He saw my face plastered all over downtown Las Vegas. And he was like, Alexis, look, go for it. The only thing I could think about was this 100K I was about to win. So this was a huge core memory for me and it kept me competing. Competing for some reason just keeps this fire in me. I'd be lying if I always said cooking made me happy. But I, Competed the first year, I placed and I won. I went back a second year and I lost. So I had to find my way back in. And once I graduated college, my sister encouraged me to not move back to Maryland. So I moved to Atlanta. 
And there was this competition called the Atlanta Burger Wars, and they host groups and individuals to compete in a competition to get back into the World Food Championships. I did it. They called me because they found me through the website. And I said, how do they know that I even live in Atlanta? I don't know, but I competed and I got back in. But my next problem was I was getting paid $11 an hour as a line cook. And if y'all know, line cooks don't get paid that much when we start, we get first get started. So I was like, I don't know how am I gonna get into this competition? I have no money. I need to bring a whole team. So the owner of this competition, the host of it, he calls me and tells me that he wants to sponsor me, my sous chef, and bring my family. I get up there and I win again. So, <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. So for me, it was about finding new ways to show up in the kitchen because I've been at multiple jobs where I've been underpaid, undermined, and completely exhausted. The line cook, the prep cook, the grill cook, you name it, I've done it. And not just my position, but being a woman, being a black woman, and being extremely young, I have been counted out for so many opportunities. But that never stopped me. It, realized, it made me realize that now more than ever, it is really my time to shine two choices when you come into this kitchen. It's either you show up and you want to learn and progress, or you stay a line cook for the rest of your life. And that's the people that the leaders in the kitchen cannot stand. They will not invest in you. And the saying goes, you can't teach an old dog any tricks. So my advice to every chef is to continue to learn. Don't go, oh, I just graduated school. I don't need nothing. I'm gonna go get my LLC. No. Go learn under some chefs that's whose food you really, really appreciate. Test new recipes at home, cater for your friends, cater for your family. Just continue to show up. And try your hand with social media, just like I did. You can also get paid that way. So we have to continuously pivot. I used to personally sell food at barbershops, hair salons, oil changing places, y'all anything to keep my pockets going, you know, because I had such a low salary when I started out. And even through these rough patches in my life, I always believed in myself. And I will leave a job that no longer serves me in a heartbeat, okay? <laughs> exactly, it's not worth it to me personally. I developed fibroids due to the high stress environments and I eventually learned to choose me over anything. I don't think any job is worth compromising your mental health or your physical health. And I'm gonna say this, the biggest risk I ever took in my life was becoming a business owner. You can make $15,000 one month, you can make $2,000 the next month. This business is extremely volatile. And I've been in business now for eight years. I'm always learning more and I'm pivoting. And y'all should see me in the pandemic. Pivot queen, crab bags, $400 three course meals, anything to keep it going in my business. And in the pandemic, that was my best fiscal year because I never gave up on myself. So my question to you is, do you have that fire to keep going when everything seems uncertain? I'd say one of my greatest qualities is that I never gave up on myself no matter how many times I fall. And the greatest memories and achievements for me are these competitions, seeing my leadership skills blossom and my cooking skills, working under some amazing chefs. So I always say don't get too cocky because at the end of the day, we are all cooks and we are here to learn and make our marks in the industry, however you see fit. So thank you so much. And I hope you guys, I hope to taste your food one day actually. Best of luck to you, chefs, and I wish you continued success. So on Monday, we did a lot of stuff. So got some lard dente to go. This 40-layer lasagna I've seen everywhere, and I'm skeptical because, you know, I don't like truffle. I hate truffle, actually, and parsnips. And But it was good. I just couldn't put too much of that truffle sauce on my lasagna. And then we went to... F1 Arcade. And when I got in there, first off, it was really nice. But 
I expected more games, but then I shouldn't have expected more games because F1 is a race car type thing that's all over like the U.S. So when we got there, I was like, okay, well, obviously we're racing cars and get into the Abbey for real. And it was a really good time. Be prepared to sweat because I don't even understand why I was in there sweating, but I was sweating. The drinks were great. Just got some fries while we waited and I won every race. Let's just be very clear here. I won every race and baby, you got to put your back into that steering wheel. <laughs> and then they have one game in there. But other than that, it's you race for 45 minutes and you can go to the bar, have a drink, play this one game, and then that's it. Would I return? Yes. Had a cute, good time. You know we got to end the episode with a little bit of Zumba. My girl Netta up there, she was working me today, y'all. But stay tuned for episode two. Bye.